I love this topic, I, and, and what a joy to get to speak on a topic that happens to be my personal passion, um, <clears throat> which is anything is possible. So, um, first of all, I would just like to know how many people in the audience have a clear dream or goal in their mind right now in their lives that excites them? Yes, a few out there, but we need more. It is my, yes, <laughs> it is my intention in the next 10 minutes to bring you all into connection with that dream that you were born to live in this lifetime. I truly believe that as when we feel or hear something that really excites us, we are meant to bring that into fruition. And so, um, if you will, right now, bring that dream into your mind. And if you don't have one, think of something that really excites you, something that you're passionate about, and, and allow any kind of negative thought, well, I couldn't ever do blah, blah, I can't, or I don't have the time, I don't have, whatever. Just drop all of that, go straight to what excites you, and what dream are you living in your life right now? So, where would you be in this dream? Where would you be in your dream life? Where is it located? What does it smell like? What people would be around you? How would you be interacting with them? Are you a boss telling them what to do, or, or is it a team working with you? Or is it uh, other people that you're trying to understand? What, what is it? Even what you would be wearing. Bring it into your mind as clearly as you can in as much detail as you can. And hold that in your mind for the rest of the night and the rest of your life. But especially for the next 10 minutes <laughs> while I'm talking, please. <laughs> and and I'm going to um, tell you a little bit about my dream. So from the time I was a small child, about eight or 10 years old, I, I clearly had a dream of putting a backpack on my back and just taking off and traveling the world. I didn't want to be a two-week tourist, you know, showing up with my, my suitcase, hanging out on the beach, and then flying back home. I, I don't know why, just intrinsically, it was my dream to just put a backpack on my back and just go out into the world. And um, as, as some of you can imagine, that's not exactly a typical dream that is available or that people think of as being available to a woman in this day and age. So by the time I was 46, life had been quite a bit different than I thought it was going to be. I um, got married, had wonderful children, went to college, did all of those things. I had a business. I, was, uh, I had a housekeeping and lands um, home repair business uh, for about 20 years. And at 46 years old, I had the proverbial uh, midlife crisis. What am I doing? I'm remodeling another kitchen. Oh my God. You know, and all I want to do is put a backpack on my back and take off. And, uh, and I really felt a part of me start to shrivel up inside. I, I really started to become depressed. I, I, I noticed that the thoughts in my head, the story I needed to tell myself in my head about why I didn't get to live my dream because life just took me over here and I couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. And I could have taken that story in my head and just said, oh, well, and just be happy with what you've got, blah, 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 right? But I knew that I was just going to, you know, begin a long, slow, dying process if I did that. And I really 
rebelled. The inner re rebel came out and I said, I've got to take off. I've been saying it for 20 years, I'm gonna take off. I've got to do it. And the universe always answers every single time. That's what I've learned over, especially over the last seven years since. I, two weeks after that, after I uh, made the commitment that I'm going to do this, I met a guy at a, at a, uh, a music festival and he travels the world by bicycle. And I said, oh, how do you do this? Uh, you know, I, I don't have enough money to travel the world. He says, I travel the world on $4,000 a year. Been to 126 countries in the last 20 years. He said, if, it's, if you want to travel the world, it's not money that's stopping you. I said, oh my goodness, okay. So, uh, spent a couple of days with him at the, at the, um, at the festival and called him up about two months later and I said, you know, would you consider allowing me to come along on, and, on one of your bicycle trips and, and teach me? And he said, you have to be able to ride 40 miles a day, six days a week with 75 pounds of gear on your bike. When you can do that, call me. So um, I pulled my bicycle out from under the front porch, sprayed off the cobwebs, you know, pumped up the tires. I hadn't been on a bike in at least 10 years or more. Um, and the very first day, those squeaky pedals, rusted pedals, I could not even get up the hill out of my subdivision. Yeah. <laughs> that was in July, 2011. In October, 2011, I met him in Johannesburg, South Africa. First time I had seen him since the, the, the uh, music festival. And we took off from Johannesburg, South Africa. And that first day that I rode my bike was the very first time I had ever actually ridden with the bags on the bike and all the weight. And he was not exactly a patient kind of person. And I asked him, so how many people have traveled around the world with you over the last 20 years? And he said, you're the first. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so he, you know, he was not used to having another person. And so I, I tried to ride in the garden with all these bags on the bike for the first time. And I couldn't, I, I dumped it the first time. And, you know, and two hours later, we were on a four lane highway riding through Johannesburg at four o'clock in the afternoon in the traffic. So, <laughs> I ended up riding with him for 10 months across the Kalahari, through to Zimbabwe, the uh, Lake Victoria, uh, up to the equator. Then we flew to Turkey, we rode across Turkey, and that's where we parted ways. I came home and uh, got a round trip ticket back to Turkey on the off chance that I would get to go back. And um, since then, I, I, went, I went back to Turkey. I've lived in Greece for three months, traded in my bicycle for a sailboat, sailed to Portugal, the Canary Islands, went to um, South America, and basically have been traveling the most of the time up until um, 2017 when I finally came home for a little while to visit my seven grandchildren. <laughs> but if I could tell you what it took to actually get there, number one, attention. Attention is like your steering wheel. It's going to show you exactly where you, whatever you're putting your attention on, if you're putting your attention on, I can't do it because I don't have enough money and all of those things that I had told myself for 20 years or more, that's what I got. But when I told myself, I am doing this and I put my attention on that, that's what I got. So attention is your steering wheel, focus is your rocket fuel. The more that you can focus, which is a learnable tr uh, trait, you can learn that through meditation, um, the more you can focus, 
the, the faster it will come to you. And we live in these incredible bodies with, with top-down brains and bottom-up brains and, uh, uh, that, that interact with one another in the most magical way that as you start stepping out, first in little ways, in mine it was, you know, to me it was a, a small step to step out with him and, and he showed me the ropes and he showed me everything and 10 months later I was brave enough to step out on my own and it just kept, uh, I kept, kept, you know, gaining the experience and gaining the faith, taking a little bit bigger steps and bigger steps. But this was on a bicycle. It still wasn't the backpack on my back or going hard. I finally did that in t October 2016 in uh, Patagonia. The circumstances were right for me to strap a backpack on my back and I hitchhiked across the Atacama Desert and all the way to Bogota, Colombia, about 6,000 miles altogether. And that was when I really felt satisfied. That's when I came home. <laughs> now I have different dreams, new ones, which fill the space and, and bring me uh, much, much joy. So if I can leave you with one idea here tonight, you were born to live your dreams. This amazing universe only has one of you, your mother, your father, even all your brothers and, and sisters are not exactly like you. 10 million people made love for 10 million years for you to be born right here. And somebody can hear a different dream, but only the one that touches your heart and lights you up is the one that is meant for you. And this universe is just waiting for you to live the dream that you were born to live. So thank you for being here tonight. The other speakers uh, and the rest of this show is going to be fantabulous, I tell you. So thank you so much, thank you so much.